Oh hello Dragonfly Swarm. Toma is very underrated. Now I can't just say that and not explain because don't get me wrong, his base kit is quite lackluster as opposed to other 4 stars and he was one of the first of many underwhelming 4 stars when Inazuma came out, setting a precedent and becoming the victim of hate from a lot of people in the Genshin community. I guess a lot of this has to do with his very unorthodox methods as a dedicated shielder along with the fact that he is pretty damn weak at C0. But that's exactly why I wanted to talk about Toma today. Despite his obvious shortcomings and the fact that he will pretty much never be a better option than Zhang Li, he actually has quite a few notable strengths that people don't often talk about, including his very powerful shield when played correctly, his amazing interruption resistance because of the way his shields work, and his ability to support quite a range of teams with more offensive utility than other shielders can generally offer. Disclaimer though, admittedly not much has changed with Toma's build since his release in 2.2, so my goal in this video is to make more of a why, when, and where you should use certain builds and teams, because I see an uncomfortable amount of people that don't know how Toma works at all and what he works best with. With. So although this guide will go over his kit, gear, and tips, it'll focus mostly on the important details you have to know in order to make the most of Toma. So let's just get right into the nitty gritty of it with his attack talent. It's useless, literally. <laughs> Ahem! Unless you're playing main DPS Toma, which I'm not going to be covering in this guide because I would like to keep my credibility, don't waste your precious resources on Toma's attack talent. Instead, allow me to interest you in his elemental skill, which serves as the baseline for his entire kit. Uh, technically. Toma's elemental skill causes him to kick around himself in an AoE of pyro damage, which then grants the active character a blazing barrier shield for 8 seconds. The shield's damage absorption scales off of a percentage of his maximum HP, along with an additional flat bonus, and you'll notice that part of the skill's attributes mentions a max shield damage absorption, which actually refers to the fact that Toma's shields, unlike every other shielder in the game, can actually stack on top of each other for up to a large percentage of his max HP. Now his skill alone can't do that, obviously, because it only lasts for 8 seconds with a 15 second cooldown at C0, which is where his burst comes into play. When casting his elemental burst, Toma will again create an AoE of pyro damage, but this time he'll grant the active character the scorching Oyoyori effect for 15 seconds at C0. During this 15 seconds, anytime your active character performs a normal attack, they're gonna trigger a fiery collapse, which will cause a cone of pyro damage to collapse on enemies and will grant and refresh a smaller version of Toma's blazing barrier shield. This effect can happen once every second. And this is how Toma's shield deviates from most shielders, because rather than applying one large shield that lasts for a certain duration, Toma Toma is constantly applying smaller shields that can stack up into a very large one, all while applying pyro and dealing damage from off the field. This makes Toma especially powerful with units that can constantly keep up with and stack his shields, such as for example Yoimiya and Hu Tao, and because of the constant refreshing of his shields, the active character will enjoy an absurd amount of interruption resistance, which again, especially for characters like Yoimiya, is very important. It's also important to note that the initial cast of Toma's burst doesn't actually apply a shield to the active character, so it's best to apply his skill shield first in order to catch pyro particles and protect the vulnerable active character before they have a chance to begin stacking the shield. And also, with Toma's first ascension passive, every time the active character does refresh the shield, that character's shield strength will increase by 5% for 6 seconds, with up to a 25% total shield strength increase. Strength? Sure, sure, sure. This is quite a necessity given that the shields created by Toma's burst have a very low damage absorption, so it'll help to keep them from breaking before you have a chance to stack them into a reliable and durable shield. It also makes Toma's shield mathematically the second strongest shield in the game, outperforming the shields of Diona and Tank Fei when played correctly. And finally, Toma's fourth ascension passive increases the damage of those pyro cones created when the active character performs normal attacks in his burst, but it's only increased by 2.2% of his max HP, so overall the damage is still quite insignificant. As for talent priority, you're gonna want to focus his burst first for the many scalings it provides, as well as the importance of increasing the durability of his stackable shields, then level his skills second, and ignore the attack talent, unless you're insane, in which case, Godspeed, soldier. Moving onwards to Toma's constellations, they are, well, for better or for worse, exceptionally valuable, pretty much all of them. This means that an unfortunately large portion of Toma's strength and viability is locked behind his constellations, but I suppose that also means that every constellation counts, so it's worth pulling for them if you really want a strong Toma. And uh, what's the worst that could happen? Oh no, I accidentally pulled Kazuha, whatever will I do with the strongest support in the game? That was like 70% a joke. Anyways, Tomo's C1 is amazing because it will pretty much guarantee that his burst and his skill cooldown are shortened by 3 seconds, which actually reduces the downtime of his burst by over 50%, which is already good in and of itself, but it allows him to play even more reliably on fast-paced teams that constantly and or quickly rotate. And beyond that, it's just good in general for the added security that Toma himself won't be restricting rotations with his otherwise quite long cooldowns. As for C2 though, in tandem with C1, it actually grants Toma a 100% burst uptime 
them, which makes him extremely valuable and significantly more reliable in pretty much every way. Basically, his entire kit is tied to his burst, so he as well as his teams will thoroughly enjoy the 100% uptime. C3 grants 3 levels to his skill, which will notably boost the strength of his skill shield, but it will also increase the maximum shield absorption that he can stack, which makes this quite a nice constellation. C4, unlike a lot of characters' fourth constellations, is arguably Toma's best constellation because it significantly alleviates his energy issues. This is important because he is otherwise extremely energy hungry and will require you to favor energy recharge stats far more than HP percent stats to maintain a good uptime, which will obviously reduce the strength of his shields and by extension his entire kit. That's why I would argue this is his best constellation despite how good all of the others are because it allows him to focus much more on his kit's HP scaling and lets him fit more comfortably onto the more energy deprived teams. C5 grants 3 levels to Toma's burst which is most notably valuable for the added strength to his stackable shields, and C6 is a very nice cherry on top for the offensive utility Toma can provide to his carries. The fact that this is a flat out normal charged and plunging attack damage increase rather than an attack percent increase makes this a much more universal buff than it would otherwise be, so it's an especially powerful constellation for Hu Tao and Yoemia, but it's also very strong for all of Toma's other potential DPS carries like Ito, Shao, Yanfei, I don't know, anyone really. I guess think of the fact that for example Diona's greatest buffing asset is the 200 elemental mastery bonus from her C6, which is only effective for reaction teams, or how tank phase buffing comes from the attack percent bonus of Thrilling Tales, which doesn't benefit characters like Hu Tao or Ito very much at all. Toma's buff is enjoyable by pretty much any carry in any team so long as the carry's damage is focused on their attacks. So as I said, overall, pretty much all of Toma's notable impact comes from his constellations, which is very sad because it means that at C0, Toma is a generally weak character who's heavily outshadowed by Zhongli, Diona, and even shielder Yanfei since she can use Thrilling Tales. But as he gains constellations, and especially at C4 and above, Toma becomes a quite competitive and capable support unit who I am willing to fight for considering the fact that a large amount of the hate I see him getting comes from people who don't know how to play him. And people that don't know how to build him. So how do you build him? Well, in terms of artifacts, Toma is a blessing in disguise because a lot of his best artifacts are extremely resin efficient to collect and the stats he needs to be at his best are generally throwaway stats so he's not too difficult to gear up at all. I'd say his overall best artifact set is a 4 piece Noblesse Oblige because it'll provide him the ability to grant his entire team a nice attack buff whenever he uses his burst, which whether or not you have C6 Toma is very enjoyable. Any enhancement to his ability to provide offensive utility to his team is very valuable because buffing and utility outside of shields are the thing his kit lacks the most of, making him generally the less favorable option amongst other shielders. And this set will remedy that quite comfortably, and the only exchange is that you'll need to make sure his energy requirements are met so that he can constantly trigger his burst off cooldown. The problem here is that this set on its own provides no energy recharge bonuses or incentives, so you'll have to sacrifice a large amount of his stat spread for energy recharge. Even still, it's one of his most useful artifact sets and makes him a respectable substitute if you need Bennett on other teams. Another 4 piece option for Toma however is the 4 piece emblem set, which will greatly incentivize building his energy recharge and will even provide a 20% bonus to his energy recharge flat out, allowing him a generally easier time focusing on his HP scaling whilst also enjoying a bit of extra burst damage just for building into energy recharge. So if you've got extra emblem pieces lying around or you plan on farming Shimanawas for Yoemiya, this set is quite easy and efficient to pick up for Toma and works great to alleviate his otherwise challenging energy recharge spread. The only other highly competitive combo I'd recommend, although there are other copium and temporary sets, is a 2 piece emblem and 2 piece tenacity. This will simply provide him with a bonus to both of his required stats and it'll allow you a potentially much easier time farming for the right substats to maximize his energy recharge requirements and HP scaling. It's not as useful for his teams as a strong 4 piece noblesse, but it's a very comfortable fallback if you can't get a strong 4 piece noblesse. As for Toma's artifact substats, let's start with his energy requirement. Exact energy recharge numbers will obviously vary from scenario to scenario given what teams Toma is on, what weapons he's using, and what enemies he's fighting, but the absolute bare minimum is generally 200% energy recharge, and that's assuming the rest of the team is effective at circulating energy for him. In most cases, it's more realistic to assume that he'll need anywhere from 220 to 250% energy recharge, and those numbers will be higher if he's in teams such as Ito teams or Shao teams where there's very little particle generation and almost zero pyro particle generation outside of Toma's own skill. But after you found a suitable amount of energy recharge, your next goal is stacking as many HP percent substats as you can fit. Because the way Toma's shield scales makes him much more effective with HP scaling than most other shielders, even Zhongli in some cases. Because the theoretical maximum damage absorption of Toma's shields can far exceed Zhongli's even with something like 25k HP on Toma and 50k HP on Zhongli. Now that doesn't mean that Toma's shield is strictly better though because Zhongli's shields have many more properties that enhance its durability and its provided utility, but it's an interesting mathematical comparison to make. 
nonetheless. So yes, energy recharge and HP are basically all you need on Toma, unless you're also using Favonius Lance, which will require you to grab at least 40% crit rate to proc its energy passive. And what that all means for his artifact main stats are, it depends. <laughs> if you're running Favonius Lance, your best main stat combo will generally be an energy recharge sands, HP goblet, and crit rate circlet. But with any other weapon, those main stats will simply depend on what you need in order to reach his energy requirement. If you can reach a suitable energy recharge with just substats and a weapon, you could probably get away with triple HP main stats for wildly enhanced shielding capabilities, but the most realistic and probably the most common combination will be an energy recharge sands with an HP goblet and circlet. And now we must discuss the weapons. Toma basically needs energy recharge weapons, and for Toma there are almost no viable polearm options that aren't energy recharge based, so with that in mind, his very best accessible weapons are as follows, in relatively no particular order. As for his weirdest weapon, let's discuss Black Tassel. Before C4, Black Tassel is quite difficult to accommodate because of its lack of energy bonuses, so I don't really recommend this over other weapons below C4, but if you do have C4 Toma and a suitable amount of energy recharge on his artifacts, this weapon, ironically, has the easy potential to become his best in slot at level 90. It's gonna provide him the exact same value as an HP main stat, so what you can do with that is run an ER Sands with an HP Goblet and Circlet, and it'll be exactly as if you were running 3 HP main stats, so massively enhanced shielding without sacrificing his energy management at all, basically. But as for his 4 star options, the first I'd recommend is the Catch. It's completely free to play to obtain and max refine, and it provides the highest energy recharge substat of any 4 star polearm, as well as a decent weapon passive that can slightly boost the damage of Toma's burst cones. Still though, its main purpose is as an energy recharge stat stick, so you don't need to go through the horrendously boring trouble of fishing for max refinements if you don't want to, and so I shan't. And another amazing 4 star option is the Favonius Lance, which unlike most of his other weapon options, actually has an amazing weapon passive for Toma to use. The weapon only provides 30.6% energy recharge at level 90, but it makes up for the unusually low substat bonus with its weapon passive, which is very valuable to refine if you can do so. The only major problem with this weapon is that it forces Toma to build crit rate so that he can use the weapon's passive reliably, which will restrict his artifact and substat options, and generally make it more difficult to focus on HP substats. Not impossible, just more difficult. There's also Prototype Star Glitter, which for all intents and purposes is identical to the catch, except for the fact that Toma won't use its weapon passive at all. Finally, another completely free-to-play craftable weapon that actually doesn't have an energy recharge substat is Kitane Cross Spear. It really isn't that bad of a weapon, even though Toma won't make use of the EM bonus, because at R5, it essentially reduces his burst cost by 15 points, which in tandem with C4, makes his burst cost only 50 energy total. Just remember that if you decide to run with this weapon, always cast his burst before you cast his skill. And finally, as for Toma's 5 star options, the best is Engulfing Lightning, which will provide a huge ER% percent bonus, which will make it an amazing weapon for that alone, but Toma really doesn't care that much about the weapon's passive, outside of the extra energy recharge when he casts his burst, so it's obviously not a weapon I'd pull just for Toma, <laughs> but if you have it and desperately need energy recharge, there you go. The only other weapon worth mentioning is Skyward Spine, and worth mentioning is putting it kindly because this weapon is outperformed by virtually every other weapon I mentioned on Toma. I just figured someone would mention it in my comments because it has an ER% percent substat, so if you have it, it's not bad, but it's far, far, far from his best. And now that we've got weapons out of the way, the last thing we have to discuss, and the most important thing as of 2.8, is Toma's team comping. What teams does he fit on? Well, as an amazing shielder, pyro applicator, and a great buffer at C6, there are a decent amount of teams that enjoy Toma, and even though there are very few teams where he's the optimal choice, there are lots of teams in which he can substitute very reliably and still play a valuable role in. So I'm gonna go over a handful of specific teams that I feel are his strongest, then towards the end I'll skim by some of the general team building basics for other less common Toma teams. His most notable team by far is a team which employs Hu Tao, Toma, a Hydro Applicator, and an Animal Unit. The Hydro Applicator is most comfortably slotted as Singcho because his amazing Hydro Application makes the rotation easier to perform, but Yelan works amazing too if you can pull off the rotations with her on the team rather than Singcho. The Animal Unit can be either Sucrose or Kazuha, and the reason this is Toma's most notable team is because he allows the Animal Unit to shred Pyro Resistance on Hu Tao's first rotation, whilst providing her an amazing shield at the same time, making him irreplaceable by any other Pyro Unit for the role he plays, and especially with Kazuha, this team allows Hu Tao to deal absolutely absurd vape damage. The only important thing to note is that you have to practice and perfect the right rotation so that Toma's burst rarely, if ever, steals Hu Tao's vapes. If you perform this team's rotations wrong, you could end up not only 
only allowing Toma to steal Hu Tao's vape charge attacks, but also allowing the animal unit to swirl the wrong elements at the wrong times, resulting in significantly lower DPS for Hu Tao. It's somewhat of a high risk, high reward team until you can get the hang of it. And on that note, another very similar team is a Yoimiya vaporized team, in which basically the exact same principles are applied, except instead of Hu Tao, you have Yoimiya. <laughs> it's worth noting that in this team, Toma has very big shoes to fill because he's taking Bennett's spot as Yoimiya's pyro support, and at C6, Toma does a very respectable job at filling in for Bennett, but even still, Bennett is the superior option overall. This team just allows Bennett to be freed up for other teams. I was able to completely finish Raiden in one rotation with this team using Yoimiya, Toma, Singcho, and Kazuha, and it proved to be a very strong team for Yoimiya overall, and it allows her to run in vaporized viridescent shred teams without worrying about being interrupted during her attack sequence, thanks to Toma's amazing shield. And in regards to both the Hu Tao team and the Yoimiya team, Yilan can very much substitute Singcho's spot and will actually make up for a significant amount of the damage lost by using Toma in place of Bennett, but Yilan's Hydro application isn't as good as Singcho's, which will make setting up the rotation a bit more difficult until you get the hang of it. Still though, definitely don't underestimate Yilan's potential to turn these two teams into unrealistically high single target DPS teams. Another great team for Toma is a triple geo Ito team. If you have Ito, Goro, and Albedo or Ningguang, you can slot Toma in the fourth spot as a crystallized enabler and a shielder, which is only valuable if you don't have Zhongli, but I would argue that Toma is much more powerful in this slot than any other shielder because of the utility he can provide for Ito, including his C6 damage buff, as well as a very high uptime shield, which can keep up with Ito's own very long rotations quite well. Ito weaves enough normal attacks between his Kesigiri slashes to allow Toma's shield to be reliably refreshed, and Toma himself can actually sacrifice some of his HP percent rolls for more energy recharge. Not only because he needs more ER in this energy hungry team, but also because Ito's very high defense scaling causes Toma's shields to be whittled down much slower than usual, allowing for more effective use of the shields overall. Finally, for his most notable teams, running Toma with Xiao is apparently quite viable, and I'd assume this is true given Toma's high shield uptime and Xiao's ability to end one plunge cancel for the constant shield refresh, plus Toma's C6 being able to benefit Xiao's plunge attacks by quite a large amount. But I say I assume because my Xiao is level 50, <laughs> so I can't really see for myself. However, I will link some reliable sources and information regarding this team comp in the video description if you're interested in learning more about the team. And finally with team comping, while Toma, especially pre-C6, is replaceable in almost all of the teams he works in, he's still a pretty cheap unit to build and therefore acts as a very efficient substitute in any team such as Yanfei teams, Klee teams, Ningguang teams, and although he has very apparent discourse with Ayato's playstyle, I still felt it was worth mentioning that Toma actually works very practically and efficiently with Ayato. Even despite his inability to allow Ayato to vape his normal attacks, given the high shield uptime and if at C6, Toma will fit quite well as a support and buffer for Ayato, and though it definitely isn't the Boba Man's strongest team, it does feel extremely fluid and consistent to run these two together because of how well their rotation times match up when paired with other characters. Not to say that this is a strong team in general, just that it was a fun team and an interesting observation when I was testing some of Toma's more recent synergies. But anyways, I think that just about sums up my 2.8 Toma guide, and though there haven't been many direct changes or enhancements to Toma's synergies and builds since his release in 2.2, we've definitely learned much more about him and what he's capable of since then, and I figured now was a better time than ever to make an updated guide on him, considering some of his best teammates, Yelan, Kazuha, Yoimiya, etc., have very recently or will very soon be rated up. And in general, I feel like although it requires basically C for this statement to be fully applicable, I think players quite significantly underestimate Toma's potential, whether because they don't understand his kit to its full capacity, or because there just aren't many teams currently in which Toma isn't replaceable, but that could change at any time. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way, please leave a like and consider subscribing as it helps my channel super super much, and also feel free to join my Discord server or follow me on Twitter because I'd love to see you around. Alright, I'm gonna go get ready for Yoimiya's banner because I gotta revive my inner Yoimiya main. I kind of died for a bit.